Hello and a very good afternoon from London. Will you join me um, <laughs> under a tree of all places? Um, I've just come from King's Cross where I'm about to head back to in a minute and I've come off to get a little bit of peace in a place called St Pancras Gardens, which just over there somewhere is the railway, but it's sort of, you can't really see it very well and it's, it's a little bit creepy. It's like, I'll show you on the way out. It's a bit like a graveyard. Anyway, I'm going to be heading up to Leeds today with LNER in first class aboard one of their locomotive hauled Intercity 225 sets. Should be a nice little ride aboard one of these um, old little electric trains. Um, not many of them left in service now. They only operate up to Leeds and York. So it'll be nice to get to experience that. And I believe the full catering is back. So I should be expecting a hot meal on board and, well, some alcohol. Um, anyway, I'm just going to head over to King's Cross and go check out the lounge first as obviously first class ticket grants access to the first class lounge. Yeah, and I'm um, going to get out of this little graveyard, which I'm very glad I'm not here after dark in. Uh, so yeah, let's head over to King's Cross and up to Leeds. So yeah, you can sort of see what I mean. It's a bit like a disused graveyard. Um, it's nice, but a bit creepy. I wouldn't want to be here after dark. Anyway, before we get the video started, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. King's Cross Station is located in central London and originally opened back in 1852. The station is served by the Circle, Hammersmith and City, Metropolitan, Northern, Piccadilly and Victoria lines on the London Underground. Of course, just across the road from King's Cross is St Pancras, gateway to continental Europe. The main entrance brings you into the station's atrium. This part of the building opened in 2012 and was built to replace the old 1970s extension, which used to be affixed to the front of the station. Large departure boards loom over the concourse below and I found these to be clear and easy to read. My train, the 1403 to Leeds, is currently showing as on time. Moving further into the station we find a number of ticket machines as well as a staff ticket office. Next to the ticket office you'll find a statue of the late Sir Nigel Gresley who designed some of Britain's most iconic steam locomotives. Some notable examples are the A1 Pacific, which includes the Flying Scotsman, and the A4 Pacific, which includes Mallard, the world's fastest steam locomotive, clocking in at 126 miles per hour or 203 kilometers an hour. As you can see, the station plays host to a number of shops and eateries. However, I shan't be needing these today as I'll be heading to the lounge in just a moment. And up on the mezzanine level you'll find a few more outlets as well as a good view of the concourse below. I always think that it looks a bit weird having the modern atrium attached to the side of the old Victorian part of the station, but what do you think of it? Be sure to let me know in the comments. This is the information announcement for Atlantic West Coast passengers travelling from London to East Coast. Any passengers for anyone at the station in Scotland, please take your first day to the next day. As I'm travelling in first class today, I have access to the LNER lounge, which is somewhat fittingly located next to Waitrose. The lounge is nice, big and pretty spacious, although it's often very busy in my experience. One thing I haven't noticed on my previous visits to the lounge are these nice little booths off to the side. I found they're a very quiet and comfortable place to wait for your train. Complimentary crisps and biscuits are also on offer in the lounge, as well as water, tea and coffee. Eventually, it's time to leave the lounge and head down to the platforms for boarding. 
To access the platforms, turn right after exiting the lounge, head across the footbridge, et voila. We'll be departing from platform 1 this afternoon. The trains depart from under the beautiful old original curved canopy. This part of the station has been in use since King's Cross's incarnation in the 1850s. Heading down the escalator, we get the first view of our ride up to West Yorkshire. While the overwhelming majority of LNER's services are now operated by the new Azuma sets, with you in the top right corner, we'll be travelling aboard one of their few remaining locomotive hauled Intercity 225 sets today. Today's train consists of nine Mark IV coaches and a Mark IV driving van trailer. This is all hauled by a Class 91 electric locomotive. The Intercity 225s were built between 1988 and 1991. British Rail built the locomotives with Metro Camel constructing the coaches. These trains have a design top speed of 140 miles per hour or 225 kilometers an hour, hence the name Intercity 225. However, they only ever achieve 125 miles per hour or 201 kilometers per hour in service. As we board, here's just a quick look at the buffet car before it gets too busy. This isn't really relevant to first class as food and drink are included in the price of your ticket, but drinks and snacks are available here for purchase. First class can be found in the three coaches closest to the London end of the train. As you can see, this is laid out in a 2 plus 1 configuration. Solo seats, as well as bays of 2 and 4 are on offer here, and it's possible to choose exactly where you sit from a seat map when booking. As I'm travelling alone, I've reserved Coach M seat 47, which is one of the solo seats. Before we depart London, I think it's time for a quick seat tour. Even for 6 foot 1 me, legroom is all but unlimited. Each seat features a nice big table, great for dining and working alike. Each window seat has access to a plug socket, although using them for toasters and hair dryers is apparently frowned upon. On the other side of the seat, you'll find a button that allows you to make use of the seat's recline. I've always thought these seats offer a fairly good amount of recline. As for the seats themselves, well, they're fantastic. Nicely padded, very well shaped, and I think the leather upholstery looks very nice and classy indeed. Lastly, you'll also find a curtain, a coat hook and a reading light, rounding off what I think is a fantastic hard product. One last thing before we depart London, let's just take a quick look at our route for today. We'll depart London and head north via the likes of Peterborough, Doncaster and Wakefield before arriving into Leeds for a total distance travelled of 186 miles or 299 kilometres. The journey up the East Coast Main Line is scheduled to take 2 hours and 13 minutes, and our top speed will be 125 miles per hour. And we depart King's Cross bang on time at 3 minutes past 2. Almost immediately after departure, we enter the gasworks tunnels. We then pass under the western end of High Speed 1 where we see one of South Eastern's javelin trains. Shortly after leaving London, the crew came round distributing menus for lunch. Unfortunately, any hopes I had of a hot meal quickly went out of the window, as it would appear that LNER are still only offering their rather stingy reduced menu. More on the food in a bit. 
As we make our way out of the capital, we pass Alexandra Palace, which is where, amongst other things, the Masters Snooker Tournament has been held since 2012. The meal service starts with a drink. Choice was somewhat limited, but I settled for this rather tasty Budweiser Czech lager. Then came the food. I went for the cheese and pickle roll, accompanied by a brownie. As nice as it was, this falls far short of the pre-pandemic first class offering. I did tweet LNER to see when the full offering would be back and they said they were quote, working hard on the menu, but given this was a good few months ago and the full menu is still yet to be reinstated, I find that somewhat hard to believe. But what do you think, are they just taking their time to perfect their menu or are they being a little bit tight fisted? Do let me know what you think in the comments below. About three quarters of an hour after departing London, we arrive at our first calling point, Peterborough. The area where the modern day city is situated has been inhabited on and off in some form or another since at least the Iron Age. Nowadays Peterborough is home to around 202,000 people. Shortly after Peterborough, the crew conducts a second drink service. This time I went for LNER's exclusive hop on board ale. This was fantastic and I'd highly recommend you try it out if you ever find yourself on board one of their trains. Okay, time for a stretch of the legs to go and see what else these trains have to offer. In Coach L you'll find a large accessible toilet as well as some spaces for wheelchair users and those with reduced mobility. As you can see there is plenty of space for storing luggage on overhead racks. In addition to this you'll find space for larger items at either end of each coach. Beyond the buffet car, which I didn't really want to film as it was very busy, we find ourselves in standard class or second class. Coach F is the accessible standard class coach. As you would expect, standard class is laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration with a good mix of table and airline style seats. I've travelled in these seats many times before and you can find my review of this from last year in the top right corner of the screen now. For those travelling without seat reservations you'll find some unreserved seating in coach C with coach B at the front of the train being the quiet coach. As you're probably sick of hearing me say by now, toilets can be found in the vestibules at one end of each coach. And I found everything to be nice and clean, well stocked and in good working order. I must say, I've always really been quite fond of the interiors on these trains. The Mark IV coaches last underwent a major internal overhaul between 2003 and 2005, back when GNER operated these trains, with Virgin giving the coaches a cosmetic makeover in 2016. As seems to be standard these days, these trains are Wi-Fi enabled. 
While hardly the fastest train Wi-Fi out there, it'll certainly make do for some light browsing. Shortly after passing the town of Newark, Nottinghamshire that is, not New Jersey, we cross Newark Flat Crossing, which is the last example of where two standard gauge lines intersect in the UK. I must say that even at 125 miles per hour, I found the ride quality of these Mark IV coaches to be rather good, with very little in the way of rattles and bumps. After passing some condemned Class 365 happy trains, <laughs> not sure they're smiling so much anymore, we arrive at our next calling point of Doncaster. Historically, the South Yorkshire town played an important part in the development of the railways in Britain, with the previously mentioned Flying Scotsman and Mallard locomotives having been built at nearby Doncaster Works. Nowadays, the site is mainly used for refurbishing passenger trains. From Doncaster, we part ways with the East Coast Main Line and join the Wakefield Line for the remainder of the journey through to Leeds. About 15 minutes prior to arriving into Leeds, we arrive at our final calling point of Wakefield Westgate. <laughs> so to summarise, I thought the trains were lovely, the seats were fantastic and the crew were great, but this was all let down a bit by the somewhat lacklustre and cheap catering offer. So I guess you're wondering just how much my little jaunt up from London cost me. I booked about a month in advance and paid £30.65 for my advance first class single, including rail card discount of a third. For a journey of nearly 200 miles, I don't think that's too bad value for money at all, especially not in first class. For reference, standard class would have set me back about 20 quid. So other than the catering, I thought the experience was very good overall, and at the end of the day, who doesn't love a ride aboard these lovely old Intercity 225 sets? But what did you make of the overall experience? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. And with that, welcome to Yorkshire's largest city, Leeds, where we arrive a few minutes early at 13 minutes past four. I do hope you enjoyed the video, if you did be sure to help us out by giving the video a like. If you're new to the channel, you're going to want to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on Friday!